Good morning, Brooks. Uh, before, I, um, before I do my talk, I want to introduce the people, some of the people who are up here who help with uh, chapel services. First of all, uh, the, the chapel prefects, Yi Jun, and I'm going to ask these folks to stand as I call their names. Yi Jun and Tom and Will and Cora and the chapel advocates, Namya and Kat and Peyton and Abigail and Grace and Aram and T.Y. Thank you, you can be seated. And uh, some more people uh, who are very, uh, who are essential to what we do in chapel. Uh, Dr. D'Angelo, would you please stand, who's the head of chapel music. Dr. Bruce, hold your, hold your applause for a minute. Dr. Bruce, who's the world's greatest accompanist. Um, uh, Reverend Afori, who helps in many ways with uh, all kinds of things, as you will find out. Uh, and finally, in his 37th year at Brooks School, Mr. Humphrey Hill, will you step out and be recognized? Mr. Humphreyville is one of the world's most amazing organists, so once in a while, listen to what he does on the keyboard. It's amazing. Uh, so, uh, uh, before you all came back to school, a couple of weeks before we got started, um, before you got started, we had a week of faculty uh, training meetings. Uh, and uh, one of those sessions that we had uh, for faculty training. <laughs> one, one of those training sessions that we had was about artificial intelligence. Uh, now, I, don't, I haven't used artificial intelligence much, and I didn't know a whole lot about it. Uh, but one of the things we were asked to do during that training session was to open up ChatGPT or one of the, one of the uh, artificial intelligence sites and just play around and see what, it, see what it could do. So I did that along with everybody else. And after it was over, uh, Mr. Tote Smith, who's one of my dear friends on the faculty, said to me, so Jim, uh, did you use it to write your sermon? And I thought, no, I didn't think of that. But I bet there's a whole lot of people in the world these days who are doing that, who are using our AI to write their sermons. So I thought, well, I'll give it a try. And then I had to think of a topic. And I thought, well, Ms. Freeman's been talk put a lot of focus on integrity at the beginning of, of this school year. So I thought, I'll ask G Chat GPT to write me a sermon about integrity. And I did it. But I have to tell you, I asked it to write a bad sermon about integrity because I knew if it wrote a good sermon, you'd know it wasn't mine. <laughs> so I asked it to write a really bad sermon about integrity, and here it is. Uh, good morning, brothers and sisters. Um, today, we're going to talk about um, integrity. Now, integrity is um, it's like, uh, it's like when you're honest. You know, you just do what's right, I guess even when no one's looking. Yeah, so like, don't lie, I guess, because that's bad. Oh uh, yeah, like be truthful. Like if someone asks you if you ate the last cookie and you did, well just like, say so, right? <laughs> anyway, integrity is important, I, I think. Um, I don't have much more to say, but yeah, just like have integrity, okay? Amen. <laughs> uh, was it a bad sermon? Okay, so what makes this sermon bad? Well, first of all, lots of hems and haws. It's, it sound, sounds kind of dopey. And the speaker doesn't really seem to know what they're doing. And also, this doesn't really tell us what integrity is. It just gives a couple of rules. Don't lie, be truthful. If you ate the last cookie, say so. So I gave chat GPT the same prompt multiple times. And it gave me, every, every version was a little bit different. I did it about a dozen times. 
every, every version was different, but they all had the same feel. They all were kind of dumb. They all gave a couple of rules, and none of them really explained integrity. But what became clearer as I looked at these versions was they all had the same quality of being kind of unreal, of being kind of dumb. And I thought, well, what, that, what's the problem? There's no there there. There's no real intelligence, no thinking, breathing, living being. This is just a computer program. It's a very clever computer program. It's very clever at imitating human behavior, but it's not real. It's just spitting out words. It's called artificial intelligence, but in reality, it's fake intelligence. And when you ask fake intelligence to talk about integrity, the best it can do is fake it. It can pretend to talk about integrity. It can fake some words about integrity, but it has no consciousness, no idea, no awareness of what it's doing. And integrity is all about being aware of what you're doing. It's all about knowing who you are as a living, breathing person, a conscious person, a, co a person with a conscience acting in the world. And if we want to have integrity, it isn't just about following rules. It isn't do this, don't do that. It's about being a whole person. It's about being a whole, complete, integrated, self-knowing, self-embracing person who knows what's right and does it because it's right. Because the spirit of rightness, the spirit of truth, lives in all of us. The spirit of truth is what I hope Brooks Chapel is all about. I don't want it to be so much about a specific religion or how a specific religion does things. I do want it to be about the spirit of truth that's the basis for all religion. And I think that that spirit of truth and integrity are pretty much the same thing. What all the religions are really about is finding that spirit of love and truth that's deep in our hearts at the very deepest part of our being. It's about finding that spirit of truth and letting it be the foundation of who we are, the foundation of how we act in the world and how we behave toward one another. That spirit has a thousand names, one of which is God. But when we look at all the world's religions with all their different names and all their different ways of talking about God, at heart, they're all talking about the same spirit, the same truth, the same inner light, the same wholeness and oneness that is the basis of integrity in how we live. So our four readings this morning came from four different religious points of view, a Hindu scripture, the ancient Confucian uh, 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 quote from Meng Tse, uh, from Muhammad Ali, the great boxer, and a contemporary Egyptian-American poet. So four very different backgrounds, but they're all telling us the same thing in different words. If we want to have integrity, if we want to be whole, complete, fulfilled human beings, we have to look deep inside ourselves. We, ha and we have to look deep and find the light of love, the light of truth that lives in our deepest hearts the light of truth that's in our individual hearts, but also fills the universe. We have to look deep and find that light. We have to let it be the guide of how we live and how we act toward other people. So I think that's integrity. It's not just following rules. It's, it's like, um, it's, uh, you know, um, it's like, uh, it's like finding something good in yourself and, uh, and kind of like living that way, yeah, right, okay? So, um, so think, think about it, I mean, have some, uh, try to have some integrity, okay, yeah, all right? You guys are great, love you.